when I was a teenager, instead of giving us a class about human sexuality, our teacher decided that he'd rather teach us hypnosis. So there we were, our whole class, staring at his finger, and I began to wonder, what does this have to do with anything? To be sure, I never learned hypnosis, uh, but that was it for sex ed classes, sexual education for that whole year. Uh, it, was, it was clear that our teacher was both unqualified and uninterested in teaching that stuff to our class. And we were not alone. Um, in the beginning of 90s, Finland was in a deep economic depression. Uh, and and uh, a lot of cuts were made in schools. Sexual education was not a great priority anyway, so that was an easy cut. And the results were clear. Uh, my age group had more sexually transmitted infections and pregnancies during our teenage years than any age group before us or after us. Yeah. Nowadays, Finland's sexual education curriculum is one of the world's most successful ones. Yeah, we, we've been working at it, and, and once again, the results are in. Um, the more Finland has gone in the direction of fact-based, inclusive sex, uh, sexual education, the number of pregnancies, uh, which also means number of abortions, and the number of sexually trans in, in, transmitted infections have gone down tremendously. Yeah. And, and, uh, and th th this is how you do it. I mean, wh why is Finnish sexual education so successful? Uh, because it's mandatory. That doesn't sound fun, but that's what works. Yeah. Finland has a, a mandatory national education, and from the years of 11 and forwards, th sometimes the teacher will just go, guess what? It's condom time. Yeah. Also, it's a successful program because we start early. Sexual education it goes for all students of 11 and up. And, and, and some people view that as young, but I actually think that we should start earlier because um, some people are already in their puberty by 11, and I feel that we should give them some basic information about what's going to happen before, before they get there. Um, and although nowadays teachers have far more education regarding sex ed topics than in my youth, some still want some help uh, about how to talk to teenagers about sex, sexuality, gender, and relationships. And that's where I come in. Yeah. Uh, I have a sexual education lecture stand-up show. <laughs> Uh, the interesting thing here is that the year I graduated high school, 1999, was the same year it became legal in Finland to encourage people to be homosexuals. Yeah, there's been some progress, because nowadays that is exactly my job. I, I go to schools, I talk to teenagers, and I encourage them to be gay. <laughs> yeah. uh, 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 and, and, and that's uh, like... There, you would have thought that there would have been some kind of huge moral outcry of panic like five years ago when I began to do the show. Because I'm an openly queer, openly polyamorous, openly kinky person talking to teenagers about sex. But that moral panic, it never really happened, not in any larger scale. And I'm still doing a show that would have been illegal when I was a teenager. Uh, so when I talk to teens, uh, I lean heavily on my, on my own experience as a teenager, like w what it was like for me and what I would have loved to hear. That's why I do stuff like I encourage teenagers to masturbate. Yeah, B because it's a healthy habit. Uh, and I know some teenagers don't need any encouragement in this. Uh, <laughs> But some really do, some really do, even some adults do. I mean, if you've never tried it, masturbation, and you're interested even slightly, I mean, I, mean, I highly recommend it. Uh, no, no, not, not right now, thank you. I'm not a teacher, I'm not a teacher, I'm, I'm just a comedian. But I do stay within the boundaries of what you can do inside a school system. 
Like, I, I, if the boundary is here, I get to as close to that boundary as possible, but I never cross it. But I get close to it because, like, for example, when I go to a school, I ask the teachers, I ask the teachers whether I can curse or not. Yeah, because my cursing is a pedagogical tool. Yeah. When you're talking to teenagers about sex, it's way better if, if, if you can use the same vocabulary as they do. You can, you can say pussy or cock without blushing. As long as you can also use the correct terms like, like vagina or penis without sounding weird. <laughs> it's important. Part of my approach is also the fact that I'm only a visitor in their schools. Yeah, and that gives me a lot of freedom. If, if, if the teachers did what I do, the rest of the year would be ruined because the students would be super aware that their teachers have genitalia and they have fun with them. <laughs> and now the teachers can just use me as an example. Yeah, and, 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 and use me as a shortcut into a vast array of topics. I actually see myself as a great opener to the actual conversations the teenagers will have in their schools and, of course, in their homes, too. Um, and so, you know, through humor and empathy, uh, I can connect with the teenagers to deliver the actual facts that I get from the official curriculum. The official curriculum is pretty good. Yeah. Um, I just package all the facts into dick jokes. Yeah, and, and like I said, Finland's sexual education program, it's fact-based, which means what you think about sex is not important. The facts are important for the teenagers to know. Yeah. Uh, I, 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 because there's a bunch of stuff that, that, that we just repeat and repeat and repeat. And repetition doesn't sound fun, but once again, that's what works. Um, Sexually transmitted infections, <laughs> reproductive biology, contraception. These are all topics that we want just to become so familiar to the teenagers that they cease to be weird or awkward and just become common knowledge. Common knowledge. So much so that when I go to schools and I, I perform for teenagers of 14 years and up, um, I know that they've already had this class for a couple of times and will have again. So I don't... I don't actually focus on that stuff. I, I go more for the non-mechanical side of sexual education. Um, I talk about variance in human sexuality and gender, which, you know, the schools do talk about, but that's where, where I focus on, because that's fighting bullying, that's fighting, fighting prejudice, that's fighting teen suicides. Sex ed works because it empowers teens about their own sexuality. And some people are afraid of this because they view teenagers as, you know, chaotic lust monsters about to explode and they fear that if, if, we, if we encourage them, that will lead to disaster, obviously. But actually, <laughs> empowering Finnish teenagers about their sexuality has led to Finnish teenagers becoming sexually active later than in most other countries. And also, because of this system, there's less rape. Let me repeat, good, fact-based sexual education means less rape. Yeah. Because people understand their own agency better, they understand consent, they, they understand that they have rights. The hashtag MeToo movement has brought to light that we live in a culture of sexual abuse. And the best way to change that culture is to educate kids from an early age. Um, a lot of what I do in my show is that I, I give permission. I give permission. Uh, like, um, whether you are gay, or bi, or pan, or omni, or demi, or asexual, or straight, I give you permission to be just that. You know, I, I encourage you to be you. Also, your gender. Whatever your gender is, it's awesome. And I want you to feel empowered about how awesome you are. Um, your sexual thoughts, your sexual thoughts, all of them are okay. Even if they're weird. And like Optimus Prime is involved. <laughs> it's still beautiful. Even if those thoughts are dark and scary. And for some reason that turns you on. 
that's okay too, because thoughts are not a problem. You know, you know if, if you want to make those things happen in the real world, then you have to think about how to do it consensually and, and ethically, but just having weird and kinky desires is not a problem. And, of course, when we're talking to teenagers about sex, and sexuality, and gender, and, rela and relationships, uh, we talk to them at an age-appropriate level. Of course. And that's why I talk to teenagers. <laughs> because th I know how to do that. I just talk to them about all these subjects like they were adults. And you should too. Let me repeat. We should talk to teenagers about sex like we talk to adults. Because they might not yet have fully developed adult brains, but they do have working sex, organ sex organs and, and, and growing sexual interests. <laughs> I, it would be fair to give them some w warning about what they'll be getting into. You know, be, be, because we can't stop them from getting information, but we can make sure that at least some of that uh, uh, information is actually helpful. Because, you know, um, raise your hand if you have children who are 10 years old or older. Okay, great. I want you to understand this. On average, your children have seen so much more porn than you can imagine. <laughs> yeah. Well, everywhere where there is internet coverage on this planet right now, we are conducting... Uh, generation-sized human experiment. What will happen to these kids if they have access to all the porn in the world from an early age? And we can, of course, try to limit their access, but if a kid decides that they want to get their hands on some porn, that will happen. So maybe we should talk to kids about porn early and repeatedly. <laughs> yeah. Um, because we understand how important it is to give kids tools to critically think about all the entertainment and information they get online. I'm just saying that the same idea goes for porn. A and around the world, sexual education curriculums are reacting to this change in the landscape, porno. Uh, and, and, and it's slow, it's so very very slow. Even here in Finland, it's, it's frustratingly slow. And this frustrates me because, you know, whether it's these sexual education programs uh, reacting slowly to porn or some other subject, we have so much knowledge about human sexuality nowadays. I feel that the kids deserve to know. And, and, and I'm, I'm an advocate for fact-based sexual education because it works. It works which means abstinence education doesn't work, denial doesn't work, obfuscation doesn't work. Human beings are sexual animals, and trying to avoid that fact has never worked in the whole human history. And I'm, and I'm passionate about this because I think Sexual education is one of the most important things you can talk during your schooling because no other single subject you get taught affects your long-time long happiness and well-being as much as sexual education. So that's why I'm passionate. And, and just finally, regarding just talking about sex with people, um, some adults don't want to hear anything about sex. And I'd never force them to. But by the same token, if a 15-year-old wants some information regarding, let's say, anal sex, we should make definite sure that that information is available for them without any shaming. Because if the only information they receive about anal sex is from porn, there could be some very real damage down the road. And by road, I mean somebody's butt. <laughs> Thank you.